Hey guys, Clay here for Clay's Bass Lessons and it's that time again where I need to change the strings on my six string bass. So I'm going to show you guys the five classic mistakes I see everybody make the first time they change the strings on their bass and also give you guys five pro tips of things you should do when you're changing your strings. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first mistake I see everybody make is replacing a broken string with a new one. Now I know that sounds weird, like what? How can that be a mistake? You, you break a string, you gotta replace it, right? Well, yes and no. New strings have a really bright tonality to them and if you've just broken a string, you probably have really old strings on your bass or you've just been plain abusing your bass. So if you replace just one string on your bass, it will sound really bright and twangy whenever you hit that string compared to the other three which are really old and really dull sounding. So what you should do is buy a whole new set and replace all four strings on your bass or however many strings you have on your bass. This way they will all sound the same at the same time. But don't cut your old ones when you take them off. Thread them off your bass carefully and put them into the packets of the strings you just put on and keep them for future emergency string breakages. Then if you break one old string in the future, you can now replace it with another old string that you have in your case and they will sound nice and similar and you can buy yourself some more time before you have to buy a whole new set. Okay, so this next mistake I see done all the time and it's lying the string across the tuner peg. Usually I always see this one done by guitarists who think they know how to change bass strings because I've changed guitar strings a hundred times and they think it must be just the same, but unfortunately guitar strings and bass strings don't attach to the tuning peg the same way. So what they do is they take their big long bass strings and they lie them across the open tuner peg. This results in big long pointy ends of strings sticking out the end of your bass like that classic rock guitar look. But the reason why you can't do this on a bass is because the tuning pegs are open and not closed like they are on a guitar. So if it's lying across the open tuner peg, all that needs to happen is somebody to bump the end of that pointy string and the whole string become unraveled. What you're supposed to do is actually cut the string to the right length and push it down the hole in the center of the tuner peg until it hits the bottom and then bend a right angle into the string at that point, which will act as a hook holding it on to the tuning peg. Which brings us now to mistake number three. Okay, so mistake number three is cutting your string too short. This is one that nearly everybody does once in their lives, but hopefully only once, because once you have done it, the string will usually break very quickly after putting it on and you learn your very expensive lesson very quickly. The string should be about one and a half to two inches longer than the tuning peg that you're attaching to. The ultimate goal is to end up with two winds around the tuner peg, but no more than three. Use the spacing of the tuning pegs on your bass as a bit of a guide and go two pegs past the one that you're attaching to, or just measure out two inches. This will likely be a little bit too much length on the end of the string. Better to play it safe and repeat this step twice than find you've cut the string too short the first time. The next one is super simple, but it is turning the tuner the wrong way. Every bass headstock is designed for the string to go to one particular side of the tuner peg. So a quick and easy rule to remember to get this right is the string is always intended to go to the opposite side of the peg to the tuning machine head. If you put it on the wrong side of the peg, it will end up with a really large angle from the nut to the tuner peg, which adds stress to the string and makes it more likely to break, plus makes one tuner turn the wrong way to all the others. So this means it changes side depending on whether your tuning machine heads are on the top or the bottom of the headstock. Okay, and this brings us to our last common mistake that everybody does, and that's letting the string have overlapping winds around the peg. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 You really don't want to end up doing this because what will end up happening is you'll be mid-performance one day, playing away in a song, and suddenly your string will settle into a groove, 
that it wasn't in before and then it will loosen itself and go horribly out of tune mid song. So the trick is as you wind the string in, make sure to keep it tight and to feed it to the bottom of the peg so that it constantly stacks nice and tidy underneath each other until the whole string has been wound up to pitch. Okay, so that's it. Those are the five mistakes I see done all the time by people when they change their strings for the first time. But I don't want to spend a whole video just telling you guys the things you're doing wrong. So now I'm going to tell you guys the five pro tips I have for you on things you should do when you're changing your strings to make your bass set up beautifully and make it super easy to play. Okay, so number one is clean your damn bass. That's right, there's a lot of dust and things that can collect underneath your strings at the headstock and around the bridge and it's a great time to actually get under there and clean it all off and if you're a particularly sweaty person you might find that your fretboard has got really grimy as well so give that all a good wipe down and it'll make it much easier to play and make your bass look super shiny. Pro tip number two is pre-stretch your strings. So when you first put on new strings they can go out of tune very quickly and often do for the first few weeks while they settle in and stretch. So give them a pre-stretch. The way I do this is to tune all the strings up to pitch and then I lift the string up and run my hand up and down the string just giving it a bit of force and each time you check it after you've done this you'll notice that the pitch should have dropped down a wee bit and you've stretched the string. Then retune it back up and repeat this process a couple more times and you will find that you have sped up that stretching in process a ton. Okay, so the next three things we're gonna look at can get really technical and they're all about your bass setup. But I'm not gonna give you guys the crazy, long, massive, time-consuming version of how to set up your bass correctly. What I will do is show you guys the way I do it, which takes a lot less time and a lot less tools, but still gets really great results. If you do, however, want to have a look at how to do it to that really extreme professional level and have the time to do so, I'll leave a link to some really great videos that you can check out how to do that yourself. But if you want to get your bass set up nice and quick, stick with me and we're going to go through the three things you need to do to get your bass set up done accurately. So depending on what gauge of strings you just put on your bass, the neck may have moved forward if there's more tension or back if there is now less. There is a rod called the truss rod running down the middle of your neck which adds tension to the neck pushing it backwards to counter the tension added by the strings pulling it forwards. So to work out if you need to adjust your truss rod or not, you can quickly eyeball it just by looking down at the line of the strings and seeing if the neck is pulling forward compared to the straight line of the string. But an even more accurate way of doing this is to fret the first fret on your bass and then also hold down the fret where the neck and bass meet as well and then see in between those two points if there is any give in the string. The more give there is, the more curve there is on the neck. When checking it this way, the string shouldn't be perfectly flat against the frets, but there shouldn't be too much give either. You want to try to get it as flat as you can without it actually sitting perfectly flat on the frets. Just have a tiny amount of give on the string, so there's just a tiny amount of curve at the end of the neck. So to do that, you need to locate on your base whether your truss rod ends at the headstock or the body end of the neck. Once you've found that, loosen the middle two strings and use an Allen key to either tighten if there's too much curve or loosen if it's too flat. Only do a couple of turns at a time on the truss rod and remember you have to retune those middle two strings up before you can recheck how straight it is as the tension needs to be on from all four strings. If there's still too much curve or not enough on your neck, just keep repeating this process over and over until your neck is nice and almost straight. Okay, so number four is setting the string height. The bass is so much easier to play when the string height or action is set really low. So grab an Allen key and lower your string saddles on your bridge down on both sides. What you want to do is basically keep lowering the string down and then checking all the frets on that string making sure that you aren't getting any nasty string buzz or dead frets along the way. And then just keep taking the string down as low as you can before you start finding that you get that nasty string buzz. I'm happy on my bass when there's no string buzz on the notes when I play to a medium or almost loud volume but when I really dig in hard I can make that buzz happen on purpose. Okay, 
so now that we've done all that, my last pro tip for you guys is how to set the intonation on your bass. Adjusting the curve of the neck and the gauge of your strings are all things that can put out the intonation for the bass. So what is the intonation? Well, basically it's where your string length now doesn't really add up to exactly where the frets are on the neck. So even though your open string is in tune, as you head up the neck, you find the notes are progressively getting further out of tune the higher up you go. So to test if your intonation is out, you simply have to tune up one of your strings and play the harmonic on the 12th fret of that string. To play a harmonic, just lightly touch the string exactly over the 12th fret line, but don't press the string down and you'll get this nice high pitched note. The harmonic will always be perfectly in tune if the open string is in tune as well because it's always exactly halfway of the length of your string. Then fret the 12th fret note on that string as well and press it down and check that note on your tuner. If the fretted 12th fret note is either higher or lower than your harmonic, then your intonation is out. So to adjust the length of your string, turn the screw at the end of the bridge that slides the saddle forwards or backwards, changing the length of your string. Once you've slid it as far as you think probably needs to be done, retune that string again and recheck the 12th fret harmonic versus the 12th fret note. If they are exactly the same, you're all done, and if not, you have to just keep repeating this process over and over again until they match up. Once you've done that for one string, you then have to repeat that over again for all four strings, or six in my case. Whew. Maybe it's not that quick a process after all. Okay, so those were my five classic mistakes to avoid and my five pro tips to do every time you change your strings. I do have one more pro tip for you guys before you go, but if you enjoyed this video guys, please feel free to leave a like and if it's your first time here on the channel, why don't you hit that subscribe button to become part of the bass squad. Okay, my last pro tip for you guys is go out and buy yourselves a string winder. These things are super cheap, but man, do they make such a difference to changing the strings on your bass and save you so much time in the process. But that's all I've got for you guys today. So until next time, keep it funky and I'll see you guys in the next video.